blaming you. I mean, we as editors make mistakes. So there is enough guilt to share among all of us. Let me tell the story of Paolo Macherini. Paolo Macherini was a thoracic surgeon who was the first in the world to produce a solid organ. So you can see here a skeleton upon which he grew gar cartilage cells and he implanted those tracheas in patients with tracheal stenosis. The people were mesmerized by this work. This is the first person in the history of the world to use a solid organ and transplanted it. Karolinska Institute wanted to get the Nobel Prize. They never got the Nobel Prize. They're the ones, by the way, who award the Nobel Prize in medicine, recruited him. And that recruitment was done by the vice chancellor against the recommendation of the chairman of ENT who opposed it. And that chairman had to be removed from his post because of his opposition to the recruitment of this uh, Italian surgeon. Well, his news was everywhere. He did surgery on eight patients. His article got published in The Lancet. The news went to the US. ABC News were interested. They sent an executive producer who produced documentaries, and she sat with him, learned about Dear the Dear doctor, your so time forth. is. I'm unable to move it if you can remove this. OK. And unfortunately, he developed an affair with the lady. He's a married man with four children, and he promised her that he will divorce his wife, get married to her, and the Pope will officiate their marriage. However, this was a lie. She got heartbroken. She knew there was something going wrong with his patients, so she pushed the data to a Swedish young journalist who investigated this over a period. Two years, he found out that all his patients, except two, died. And they died because of inflammation growing within the skeleton of that trachea, suffocated them to death. He produced a documentary, and he aired it at the time when the Prime Minister of Sweden was watching the news. The Prime Minister was horrified by the documentary. He picked up the phone, called the Chancellor, and told him, your Vice Chancellor is fired. Well, he made it to BBC News, disgraced Sir Journal. The Vice Chancellor was fired. The anti-surgeon who opposed him went and exposed everything that surgeon did. And the thing is, he never got an IRB approval for his work. It was done without ethical approval. Ma Paolo Maturini fled the country and went and worked in Kazakhstan for a while. And then he was you know, persecuted. In the end, the courts, just a few months ago, the courts in Sweden you know, uh, said he's guilty, but he's not going to serve jail time. The, East, the chairman of ENT, the Swedish Journal, w asked the Lancet to retract the article. Lancet did not retract the article, so he had to, to write to PubMed, and PubMed allowed him to put this in the, on their website. So if you go and check the article, you'll find a note written down that it is to be retracted in the explanation by the ENT surgeon about the article. We fail even in other articles. Recently, for example, hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for COVID. Dr. Mehra from Surgery Sphere published huge amount of data about hydroxychloroquine in The Lancet and again in New England Journal of Medicine. Both were turned out to be false with falsification of data and were retracted. So big journals do fail. And when ethics are not observed, it will lead to disasters. My conclusion. You must address